Today we're going to talk about Over London, which is a satirical comedy book in the vein of Christopher Moore or uh, Terry Pratchett with some steampunk themes and some pirate stuff going on and airships and it's all a lot of fun. Before we get started, I do need to make sure that you know that I did receive an early copy of this book from the publisher in exchange for my fair and honest review. So Over London is a steampunk themed adventure type story. Uh, it, it's almost cozy fantasy, but the stakes are a little bit too high for it to be cozy fantasy. If you like books like Legends and Lattes, you will probably like Over London. Um, they have a very similar sort of low stakes vibe, even though it is actually dangerous. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot of Terry Pratchett's Discworld, a lot of Terry Pratchett's Discworld, uh, the way that language is used, because of course the authors are British, um, and that the humor in it and the cleverness of the way that phrases are turned and sort of the puns that are used, uh, it's all very Discworldy. Um, I really love the Discworld series, so if you are into that or if you like cozy fantasy like Legends and Lattes, this is probably going to be right up your alley. It also reminded me a lot of Christopher Moore's humor. Um, my favorite book ever, ever, is Lamb by Christopher Moore. Um, and the, the humor in this reminded me very much of that, where it was sort of clever and it took you a second to catch on sometimes. Uh, it's, not, it's not too highbrow, but it's also not ridiculous. Um, or, or it is ridiculous, but intentionally ridiculous, if that makes sense, and in the best possible way. Okay. So on to the story. Our hero is the Dread Pirate Purple Rain, who has unfortunately lost her ship due to it being confiscated by the Academic Council, which is sort of the overseeing legal body for Over London. It is called Over London because it is the city of London floated up into the air. All major cities in this Victorian era world are floating uh, due to some miraculous stone found in the volcano I want to say it's the 1700s and that the floating stone, lava stone stuff was discovered in the 1500s. So uh, around that time, they also discovered these crustaceans that will help improve longevity and make you live for longer. So a lot of the people that are alive in the story have been alive for a really long time. You can die by violence, but you're not really going to die of old age in this world, right? So. Um, like often happens, as people age, people have gotten set in their ways. They've decided that uh, the innovation of the era, the, the sort of steampunk, cogwheel, um, you know, tension-powered equipment that they have is the, the pinnacle of technological advancement. And because they're all so old, um, it, it doesn't occur to them that there could be something better, right? So, so society sort of moves forward as young people come along and, and decide, oh, you know, well, I can do better than that. Whereas we, elderly folks, have seen things be invented and it was so much better than what it was before, it never occurred to us that it could be better stuff, right? So, so innovation has kind of stagnated and they're all kind of stuck in this steam-powered, tension-powered, very steampunky, airship sort of um, environment. The way that Over London is described, with its various districts and enforcement gangs, reminds me very much of Ankh Morpork from the Discworld series and its, uh, its guilds and the way that they sort of police their own districts and uh, crime is allowed but only when it's guild-related <laughs> guild crime and or sanctioned by the guild. Anyway, it's all very fun and very frolicky um, in a way that winds up with people exploding. It, it's hard to describe. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Um, so, the, so the Dread Pirate, Captain Purple Rain, uh, Alex, <laughs> has lost her ship and her crew is looking for something to do. Uh, the Academic Council, she somehow finagled uh, a letter of mark out of them. So she is a privateer now, but they won't give her back her ship. She's got to get it out of hock for 50 pounds, which is a lot of money in the 1700s. And, uh, it's a lot of money now, but it was a lot of money in the 1700s. And, uh... So she's got to earn some money. So she and her crew of two other people <laughs> decide that they're going to start collecting bounties for these wanted posters, right? You know, uh, this dude stole my goat, um, or that guy looked at me cockeyed last week, um, and that sort of thing. So they're, they're going about uh, fulfilling these wanted posters, and, well, some of them, uh, the less gruesome ones, and uh, 
and <laughs> collecting these tiny poundings, trying to save their pennies to get their ship out of hop so they can go back to being pri uh, pirates. Um, and then on the other side of the city, uh, a young man, an artificer, a guy who works on cogs and wheels and little motors and stuff, uh, is sitting in church, and suddenly his priest explodes all over the church, uh, and nobody knows why. So the Dread Pirate Purple Rain winds up getting commissioned to investigate the priest's explosion, and the kid, the artificer kid who was there, winds up investigating just because he has a curious mind. Um, and so they, they kind of wind up smashing into each other and, and working together to try and solve this series of very explosive murders uh, that nobody seems to be able to figure out. And, uh, you know, they get hired by various gangs, all to do the same job, um, all working against each other and not aware that they're hiring the same person to do the same job. Uh, so they're basically quadruple dipping by the time, <laughs> by the time we get to the end of the book. And, and all of these leadership councils and guilds and all of that, they're all very corrupt, uh, like you would expect in that sort of environment. And, and it's, it's just really fun and funny. The writing is smooth, the humor is spot on. Uh, it's not, if you're American, it's not too British. I know sometimes um, when, when we Americans read British humor-related books, we don't really get the humor. Uh, you won't struggle with that here. It, it's all very easy to grasp, even if you're not used to British humor. Uh, if you love British humor, you're going to like it. Um, it's very punny <laughs> in the best way. Uh, there, there's a lot of dad-type jokes in there and a lot of double entendre. Um, some of the humor is overt and it's intentional and you know that they're trying to be funny and some of it's really subtle and it kind of sneaks back up on you. Uh, so that, that was a lot of fun for me. Um, I can honestly say I don't have any notes. Um, it might, might have dragged a little bit at about the two-thirds mark where they were, you know, slowing down enough so that you could catch all the details, but it was like maybe a chapter or two. The chapters are nice and short, they're real snappy. Um, it's a great way to spend an afternoon. I didn't find any editing problems. There was nothing in there that didn't make sense to me. Uh, I knew what was going on the whole time. I, I sat down and devoured this book. I started reading it last night. I fell asleep on the couch reading it, picked it right back up when I woke up this morning and finished it, um, and then decided to come and talk to you guys about it. So uh, yeah, I, I have nothing bad to say about it. It was a fantastic book. It was a fantastic read. So if you like cozy fantasy or you like uh, satire, um, if you like Christopher Moore or Discworld and, uh, or Douglas Adams, that kind of humor, if you're into that sort of thing, you're probably really gonna like this. You should probably pick it up. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I had a great time. I started reading it last night. I fell asleep on the couch reading it and then woke up and picked it up and <laughs> finished it this morning. Um, but it's, it's my kind of book, right? I, I like cozy fantasy. I like, uh, Terry Pratchett-esque or Christopher Moore-esque sort of humor. So, um, if that's what you're into and, and that's what you like, if you're like me and that's like really your kind of thing, uh, you're probably really going to like it. So Over London, it comes out on September 12th, 2023. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And of course, if you like the way that I present information, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. You can find all of my social media contacts in the description. And of course, if you want to keep up with me and the progress I'm making on my current novel, you can do that at effiewritesbooks.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have an excellent day, and I'll see you next time.